Reiterating Fabio Quattararo's remarks on the aggressive style of the current M1, Remy Gardner made his Yamaha MotoGP debut at the Saxon Ring, filling in for the injured Alex Rins. The M1, which was formerly renowned for its easy handling and approachable design, has evolved into a considerably more aggressive vehicle in recent seasons, as engineers have attempted to extract even more engine power to compete with European vehicles. How ungracious! Gardner described the engine nature as being nearly identical to a two-stroke. With a best racing lap of 1.4 and 75 seconds from the pole, but just a few tenths behind Honda's Joan Mir, Gardner crossed the finish line in 20th place, out of 22, in both of the Saxon Ring races. Gardner won the Moto2 Championship in 2021 and then competed for KTM in the MotoGP season of 2022. The Australian, who moved to Yamaha for World SBK last year and has already claimed his first podium this season, is the son of 1987 world champion Wayne. Gardner, who is sixth in the World SBK rankings right now, will be returning to his R1 for this weekend's British round at Donington Park. Remy Gardner's victory was ultimately his own after the race, thanks to a tyre pressure penalty for Honda test rider Stefan Bradl. Other than that, the headline results weren't too nice. 33 seconds behind teammate Fabio Quattararo and 50 seconds off the victory, which works out to more over a second every lap at a small MotoGP track like the Saxon Ring. However, that would be a false framing. The MotoGP that saw Jonathan Rea take over Casey Stoner's ride and finish 8th and 7th has long since passed, as has the MotoGP that saw Troy Bayliss emerge victorious. The results of a consistent performer such as Michel Pirro, the Ducati wildcard who has been around for a long time, show how much more difficult and specialised things have gotten for those who are new to the sport. Naturally, Gardner was coming in entirely out of the cold. The previous Sunday, while motocrossing with fellow intermediate class champion Tito Rabat, he received a call from Yamaha. No prior testing or experience with bikes belonging to the same family. To see the contrast, one only needs to compare the beginning and end of Franco Morbidelli's season. Furthermore, in the context of a whole weekend, it wasn't actually more than a second per lap. The full image of the weekend was not reflected in a race when, inexperienced, Gardner burnt his rear tyre and ended up losing almost two seconds on a lap. Rather, when considered as a whole, it indicated that a satellite world superbike rider can also be a really significant asset for Yamaha's MotoGP program, but perhaps not to the degree that it affects the company's ambitions for full-time riders. Gardner has been on an obvious upward trajectory throughout his first 18 months at the GRT Yamaha team, and he hopes to finish in the top five this year. This indicates that the process is undoubtedly very complicated. All of a sudden, he had to get used to riding on a different bike and go back to the Michelins. In FP1, I continued to ride it similarly to the Pirelli, with a lot of lean angle all the way to the curb. The guys here are picking it up and taking it for a spin. Gardner asserts, I believe that the Yamaha is a little bit more like that. However, I made a small modification for FP2, and to be honest, I felt about halfway competitive. It was good to pass the Hondas in front of us. He slightly marred it when he crashed at the very end of Friday, giving himself cuts on his fingers for the remainder of the weekend. But he still looked impressive, finishing the day one second ahead of Quattararo and appearing closer while not in time attack mode. Gardner was again a second off in qualifying, although he should have been closer had he completed a lap on the second tyre. That would be about as near as he got. For me, Remy is doing quite a good job for the first race that he's doing. Quattararo remarked. Ten, even five years ago, it would have been unremarkable for new riders to go on the Yamaha and feel at ease, let alone look at ease on the timing screens. However, based on the feedback from all the riders who have used the more modern M1, the bike's reputation for being docile and easy to use has faded. In the end, Gardner also appeared to follow those same lines. At first, he got along very well with its mechanical side, but he quickly became aware of the engine's aggressive nature. I suppose the Yamaha has always been known for being a really smooth and simple bike to ride. To be honest, I thought it was a little bit forceful, he remarks. It might have been the engine package alone, 
but I did find it to be a little bit more aggressive than I had anticipated. Slide control and gas control are really challenging. This, along with the majority of Gardner's observations, is consistent with comments from his colleagues. Gardner quickly identified the M1's poor turn exit performance, even though his claim that the bike was really good on brakes would likely surprise Quartararo, who spent the German Grand Prix weekend highlighting how the M1 was failing in every department and had any true trump cards. We're missing in order to complete the corner, acquire that 20%, and maintain a straight path while driving. Tense, grip, and edge. Some rear grip is missing from us. The remaining boys can fill up the gas tank, keep a small amount of tire line, pick it up, and drive. In contrast, when you press the gas here, it tends to slide a little bit, so you're constantly trying to find the grip and picking it up a little earlier. Right now, it feels a little bit like a dance. It's not about picking up and rounding corners. That's just my opinion. Clearly, don't agree with me. Quateraro expressed dissatisfaction with the same issues, including the lack of grip generally, and the slips through the series of left-handers in the center of the course, but added, the more laps he, Gardner does, the more he will see that this, a lack of grip, is only a small part of our weaknesses. Despite his evident dissatisfaction with the M1's performance at the Saxon Ring, Quateraro managed to push the car to the brink of the top 10 in both races. This is hardly surprising because Quateraro, who was formerly known for his expertise in qualifying, has actually reversed his performance trends during these lean periods for Yamaha. Over the past year and a half, he has been rather prone to losing a head-to-head -head qualifying match to either Franco Morbidelli or Alex Rins. However, when the conditions are normal and arm pump is prevented, he has consistently outperformed the two in race trim. He proved to be a formidable opponent for Gardner, who completed the sprint 12 seconds behind. Gardner bemoaned a lack of explosivity in the early going, which may be attributed to MotoGP rustiness or the M1's inability to take advantage of new tyres. At the halfway point of the main race, he was somewhat closer to Quateraro just before his rear tyre failed. Ultimately, he participated actively in the races instead of being an observer, which is the best thing you can ask for from a rider who arrived virtually unprepared. Does it indicate that Yamaha should pass on riders like Miguel Oliveira and Sergio Garcia in favor of Gardner, given that the company now has two more factory contracts to offer, if Rins is re-signed, to riders for its new satellite team Pramac? No, probably not. It's unlikely that even Gardner would say that. Regardless of tester Cal Crutchlow's availability, excitement, and fitness, Gardner might suddenly be Yamaha's go-to first name in the phone book if the company needs a MotoGP rider for the weekend. If Quateraro had been the only one carrying the flag at the Saxon ring, it would have been the most obvious thing in the world, especially with Crutchlow recovering from his own injury. Rather, it offered Gardner the keys and some real developmental goodies as well. Only Yamaha will be able to judge how well Gardner has responded to comments and how valuable it views Gardner to be going forward as a world superbike asset, as well as if it can afford to take the chance of jeopardizing that by having Gardner divide his time. But two years after his main MotoGP career ended, there is definitely a path here for Gardner to pursue a career in MotoGP adjacent racing. With Crutchlow not getting any younger, many MotoGP factories going for two test riders anyway, and Yamaha being granted the maximum amount of testing and in-season development due to the current state of its bike. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.